in every circumstance for you are Jaira you are enough Say it again, oh, forever enough, always enough, more than enough, hey, for, oh, for you are, you are, you are, Jaira, you are enough, oh, Jaira, you are enough.
all we have need of this morning. Whatever you have need of, God is. Amen. He's not the, He's not way back there. He's the I am, the ever-present God. So whatever you have need of, he's here to supply. If you have need of healing, if you have need of deliverance, if you have need of, of, of just a little comfort, God is here to supply. Amen. If you're down in your finances, amen. If you're down in your spirit, he's a comforter. He's a provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, 
nor the operations of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Bless be the Lord because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. I am helped, therefore my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them all also and lift them up forever. Amen. 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 Let's bow our hearts, Almighty God. Father, we bow our hearts, Lord. I thank you for the reading of your word, Lord. Father, that wasn't a scripture that I actually chose, Lord, but you pointed me to it just now, and there was a purpose for it. Amen. So, Father God, I pray now your blessings upon your people. As we have all, Lord, sanctified our hearts, Lord, and we're consecrating ourselves to concentrate on you. Move in the midst, Lord God, of your people. And may your presence not go unrecognized, Lord Jesus. May we all realize that you are here, Lord God. You have something that you want to say to us this morning. You have something that you want to do for us, Lord, and we surrender our vessels to you, Lord. Use each and every person here. Use our brothers and sisters that are streaming online, Lord God. Move to where they are, Lord God, and may the Holy Ghost brood of his people, Lord God. Grant the heart's desire and meet in every need, Lord. Oh, Father, continue to transform us into the image of the Lord Jesus. Father, we ask, oh God, your blessings upon our pastor as he prepares to bring the message to us this morning, Lord. Speak to him and through him, Lord God. We are all ready to hear. We commit ourselves in this service into your hands in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.
specialist um, for a condition. Uh, they had some lady come over and there was a lot of black foot, black stuff on her foot and on her toe, so they're very concerned about that. So she's going to see someone else. And also, um, I had the brothers. I found out about a cousin of mine. His name is Deidre Jackson. We actually uh, photographed his wedding back in December. And he's been in the hospital for 45 days. His leg was swelling up. His left leg was a lot larger than his right leg. And it was a lot of fluid, so they took him to the hospital and there was a mass on his, on his brain. So they removed part of his skull and took the brain out. They drained 33 cc's of fluid off of his spine. He then caught COVID, pneumonia, had a staph infection. They put a trach inside of him and they put what they call a peg, I believe, inside of him yesterday and the surgery was successful. But uh, they still have his part of his skull off to relieve the pressure, so we want to keep him in prayer this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have announcements. And also for our guests, God bless you. It's good to have you all here. The restrooms are on this side out here. Please knock on the door before you go in. The doors don't lock, so you don't want to walk in on anyone, and you don't want anybody walking in on you, so there's a little vacant thing, but the doors don't lock, so please knock before you enter. Amen. We have a few birthdays coming up tomorrow. Precious Brother Kings. everything that Satan has put upon him, Lord God. Father, heal his body completely, Lord. May it be a complete transformation, Lord God, and may you heal his soul, Lord. Save him, Lord God. He served you the best that he knows how, Lord Jesus. But Father, we ask that you would give him a closer walk with you, Lord. Draw him closer, Lord. Draw his wife and his family closer, Lord. Or be merciful to them in, in this hour, Lord. You know the needs represented amongst us, Lord God. Father, you know the needs upon your people's heart. Meet every need. Grant every heart's desire, Lord. And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory. We want to thank you, Father God, as we offer to you this portion of our worship and our giving, Almighty God. You have given to us, Lord, so we give to you in return, Lord. Father, we're so grateful, Lord God, how you bless us in so many ways, Lord God. Not only monetarily, Lord God, but spiritually physically in our health you protect us on the dangerous highways lord when satan would try to do harm to us lord it, your word is there lord you said you would devour um lord just just have your way lord 
rebuke the devourer for our sake, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's it, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord, for honoring your word, Lord. Father, we bless your name and give you praise, honor, and glory. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. bless you and everyone. <laughs> so good to see our visitors out this morning. Amen. Praise God. I invite you to join me with this uh, timeless old hymn that I hadn't heard it during the Easter season, so I saw my heart to sing it today. Amen. On a hill far away stood an old Ragged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of loss. Sinners were slain, so I cherished the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. Change it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction to me. the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bury it to dark Calvary yes I cherish the old rugged cross
hallelujah and exchange it someday for a crown hallelujah thank you Jesus I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put on my robe and tell
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Ah, <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. My God, my God. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let you go, sis. Sister Das, before you take us deeper. Amen. Y'all doing a good job. Appreciate y'all. Amen. Amen. Let's give the, the Lord a hand clap for our musicians. Thank God for Spirit of Truth 2.0. Amen. My God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all just be seated just for a moment. Just give me a chance to, to breathe. <laughs> Amen. My God. Amen. Praising God. I ain't, got, I ain't got no problem with that. We, we were asking the Lord to move in a special way. And people come here because they need God. And uh, this is where we want them to find God. So don't let, don't let the worship, amen, disrupt you. Uh, I encourage if you want to, just jump in and enter in. Praise God. You, you ought to uh, uh, put that song on your heart. Lord, don't pass me by. Amen. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Praise God. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you just don't know what other people are going through and, and why they praising God the way they praising God. If they could ever just share their testimony with you, amen, you would understand. I remember the story of the man that um, 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 I believe they went to his house. I th think, think his name was Shouting John. And uh, man, he just got worked up. Every time he went to church, he was just praising and worshiping. And uh, they said, it's not that kind of church. We don't do that here. We don't do that here. So they had some of the, 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 the members, the deacons and all that. They went out to talk to him went to his house and talked to him and said, hey, you know, uh, we're going to need you to kind of calm things down when you come to church because we don't, we don't, that's not the way we do things. You interrupt the preacher and, you know, it's just a mess when you come to church. And uh, he said, well, you know, y'all drove over all this land uh, here to get to my house and I need y'all to know God has blessed me with all of this. Uh, you had to park right next to my car. God blessed me with that. You came into my house God bless me with that you see these animals I got God bless me and I can't help but praise him for all the things that he's blessed me with you see matter of fact I got a mule right here I was getting ready to go out and plow but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me then I can't help myself so hold my mule while I shout what he was trying to say, I ain't got to get to church to shout. I can praise him here. I can praise him there. I can praise him just about everywhere. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Amen. <laughs> well, that's what we come to do just to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. My, before I just, just got worked up, I was just trying to just take a little time to, to thank God for all of the, the saints being in the house. Amen. Brother Stanley, so good to see you and your family. Uh, 
appreciate you all. The daughters, granddaughter, God bless you. God bless you. Grandson, amen. Just so, so good to see y'all. We want you to feel that way too, brother. Uh, brother Jiram and Sister Lady, God bless you all. Amen. So good to see you. Praise God. Um, did we did we announce we got prayer prayer this week? Yeah. Brother's prayer. Okay, we we own this week, brother. Amen. I see Brother Kelly back there. God bless you, Brother Kelly. Amen. His sons. And just so good to so good to, to see the saints and brother and sister Muringami are back with us. Amen. From Canada. Praise the Lord. Um, this, this morning, um, Sister Virginia had texted me and said that her and Sister Ashley weren't feeling their best. Um, and I tell you, that devil ain't nothing but a liar. Uh, praise the Lord. She, was, she had texted me and she said, um, you know, I had a cousin, no, no a sister, a sister uh, that they had reconnected with. Uh, and uh, this sister somehow, I believe, they shared the series with her, Hurt People Hurt People. And she was just um, blessed by the series. And she was coming, came to town to come to church with them today. And the devil, the devil got in there. I say he a liar. You know, he a liar, so, you know, they, they online, amen, and listen, we happy to have them, but uh, I just, uh, it's something about being in church, amen, I just, I, I don't know about y'all, but I hate the devil, <laughs> amen, it always disrupting something, but uh, no matter what, we still got the victory, so, amen, and all the other saints that are joining us online, we say God bless you. Amen. Uh, uh, this morning, um, I am happy to be back home. We were able to go to London uh, for Easter, and we had a wonderful time. Amen. There in London, uh, we were able to take some of the saints with us, and uh, we uh, just, just uh, man, they they was having church, and felt like y'all brought some of that same out here this morning, and just. Uh, I, it just it just been it's just been a real wonderful atmosphere but we, we just thoroughly enjoyed ourselves and uh, just the way the Lord just did so many things amen while we were while we were there uh, I shared with you all the testimony on, on Wednesday night but some that didn't hear it but there was a sister that came to the services and uh, sister Maddie was her name and she came on a, on a uh, Friday night and she uh, she said to she was a member of the choir and she said to the choir member says i won't be able to sing with y'all during this easter weekend i have to have emergency surgery and um she says but you know what i'm gonna take my clothes to the hospital and i'm gonna get dressed and when y'all start singing my song i'm gonna be on the line singing from my hospital bed amen with y'all and, uh, and uh, you know, so some kind of way they were supposed to sing a song on, on a particular day, it didn't get sung. And, um, and uh, just service after service, the it it, song kept getting delayed. So after service, I, I had preached that, that day, Step Into the Vision, and I was sharing the testimony of Sister Tanya and how um, she said, I don't want surgery until after I'm prayed for. Uh, I'm going to the meeting. I want to be prayed for. I said, after that, then y'all can do the surgery. And Sister Tanya, uh, we hadn't prayed, and it was the third service. She said, look, um, Brother Troy, go tell them I want to be prayed for before I go back home. So after we preached, we prayed for her, and uh, Brother Nathan prayed for her, and then we, um, uh, we came on back home, and she was preparing for surgery. We flew back on Monday. She was preparing for surgery on uh, uh, Tuesday. And Sister Tanya, amen, uh, I'm, I'm talking about Sister Tanya right here. <laughs> amen, sitting right over there. Because um, they, they say when, you're, when, when, you, when I was at the church, you got to tell the people, the, pres the person is here. So I'm letting y'all know she's here. <laughs> amen. 
but uh, but um, but but Sister Tanya went for her, her surgery, uh, and when she woke up that morning, looked there inside of her scalp, um, the thing had gone. It was disappeared. It had fallen off. God had healed her instantly. And uh, so I was sharing a testimony over there, and, and they told us to say, Sister, you cannot go and let them doctors operate on you until you get prayed for. So I was sitting down eating. They pulled me out of my chair and said, this sister need prayer. I said, okay, we went in the office. We prayed for her, and I encouraged her. I said, I thank God get more glory with you being in service than being in the hospital. And um, she said, I said, well, just, you know, we're going to do our part. The Bible tells us to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's our part. Say, let God do the rest of it. And uh, so we, we, we laid hands on her. We prayed for her. And uh, she says, okay, and uh, she went on out and got up the next morning, reported to the hospital. And when she got there to the hospital, uh, the doctors had already prepped and said, okay, we're ready, ready for the surgery. Well, there's another team that was at the hospital said, no, we need to check her first before y'all do the surgery. They say, no, we already ready for the surgery, no checking, we're gonna go ahead and take her in right now. They say, no, we need to check her. No, we're gonna do surgery. No, we need to check her. So the ones that said we need to check her, they won. And they pulled over and they checked her and they looked at her and said, wow, tremendous improvement. You don't need surgery, you can go on home. So we saw God do an instant miracle. Praise God. Amen, he is still the same yesterday, today and forever. And uh, so, so when that sister came back to church that night, you know, and I was telling, I was in the car, Brother Gwen, I said, I just, I feel something for that sister. I, I just think she, she God going to do something. And, and, and while I'm saying that, she, he's getting a text saying the sister's been released from the hospital. And she was coming to church. I said, praise God. So on that. On that, uh, she came back on, 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 on Saturday night, and we were just doing the worship, the, the, the time of worship that Saturday night, just had a wonderful time. And, and then on Sunday morning, she stood up to sing that song with the choir. Amen. And uh, I posted a picture online, but it was, a, it was Brother, Brother Gwynnum was standing there with a sister right next to him with a blue dress on. Uh, that was Sister Maddie. Amen. And um, uh, just, a, 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 I mean, just a powerful, powerful testimony. And, and even in the preaching of the word, I had preached a sermon, Step into the Vision, on uh, Friday night. Brother Diggs was not there. He was preaching at another church, had to come through on that Saturday morning for one service. And he, he walked in, and all he kept saying was, Step into the Vision. Like, hey, this ain't nothing but God. <laughs> this ain't nothing but God. So, I mean, we just, and, and Brother Diggs had already told us, say, the same thing happened to them at the other meeting. Uh, he had preached that Saturday morning, I mean, Friday morning at a church, and Brother Andrew had preached where we were Friday morning, but Friday night, Brother Andrew went to the other church and picked up on Brother Diggs' sermon. I mean, it just, just God moving all over the place. And every church is feeling the move of the Spirit. Right? There's enough to go around for everybody. Amen. So, uh, different ones start, you know, the brothers, they called up to testify on that, Sunday, on that Saturday night, and different ones testifying. And one brother just uh, walked right into my notes. Was I, I was getting ready to preach on Sunday. He started talking about the rock moving. I'm like, that's my sermon. You know, and uh, and Brother Whisper had prayed my sermon, and he prayed my sermon title in his prayer that Saturday morning. I'm like, Lord, this ain't this is something. So I got a chance to talk to Brother Whisper after he said, he said, Brother Jack, the reason I prayed that sermon title because I preached the same sermon the week before. He says, but I preached it at a different church. I didn't preach it at my church. I say, what he said, I just titled it in Shona, but uh, but I, he said, but I preached the same sermon. Their rock is not like our rock. I say, God is amazing. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, when you see just the hand of God just confirming, amen, every step that you're taking, uh, it blesses your heart, gives you a peace, you know, that you're in his perfect will. And, uh, and we're just grateful. And I know there's many other testimonies. I did hear of another brother that was uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, while we were there. And uh, that, that is, uh, that's, that's what the meetings are all about. Amen. 
um, you know, it's been the devil that's been trying to keep us away from one another. Amen. But uh, but you know what? We're going to have to, we got to break this and uh, we got to be able to come back together and fellowship. So they already told us that we got, we got a whole bunch want to come over here. They, try, they trying to make a meeting happen. <laughs> Y'all got to do something. <laughs> So we, we're going to try to make something happen because it's a whole bunch of them want to come, amen, right here to uh, uh, the U.S. and just so many other testimonies. I had a chance to talk to a brother who had had an experience of going to heaven and coming back. And he was telling me how when he was, the angels came to get him, they put him in a chariot. And as he was going, he was going down a, a pathway, uh, he says, uh, just full of light. And he looked to one side and he said, just full of darkness and all these screams down people that were going towards hell. And he says, I was going towards heaven, just full of light. And he says, as, as I was going down this pathway, I looked on the walls of, um, of, uh, of, 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 of the tunnel that I was in. He said, I could see all the sermons that my pastor preached, the sermon titles. And I could see the sermon titles of the prophet. He says, I even preached a couple sermons myself, and I can see my sermon titles all over the walls. And he said, pull me right into this the Coliseum. And when I got there to the Coliseum, all these people, hundreds of thousands of people just, you know, welcome, my brother. Welcome, my brother. So good to have you here, brother. And he was just, he used to say, like, he felt like royalty, stepping out of a carriage and coming up. And, he's, and, he, and, he, uh, and he just kind of heard the, the voice of the Lord, you know, tell him, welcome home. And he says he never saw him, but he just heard his voice. And he says, uh, he says, uh, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I see, I knew that I was, you know, he had meningitis, and he, they, that, and this would cause him to go into this condition. He thought he was leaving, and uh, so he got there, and and he just kind of turned and looked back. When he looked back. He saw his wife and a couple of his young kids, and they looked at him and said, "Daddy, are you sure you want to do this now?" And he looked at him. And he turned and says, uh, Lord, just give me another opportunity just to raise them. And, um, and when he said it, he heard the voice of the Lord say, your request has been granted. And the angels that brought him came and took him and put him back in the carriage, took him back through the tunnel and took him back to his body at the hospital. And he was supposed to have a, a checkup at 2 o'clock and the nurse walked in at 2 o'clock and she started shaking him. You all right? You all right? Like, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. And she say, uh, she put a, a, a blood pressure monitor on him and checked his blood pressure. She said, measure zero. Then tried to take his temperature, measure zero. She's like, oh my goodness, you dying, you know? And uh, so, so, so she just freaked out. He said, hey, 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 just wait, just wait, just wait. No, 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 I gotta get somebody in here, you dying. So she said, he said, no. Just get another machine real quick and just try it, just try it. She said, no, this machine work. I know it work. I just tried it over there. She said, just calm down, go get another machine and bring it over here. So got another machine, did the blood pressure, everything was normal. Took his temperature, everything was normal. She said she ain't never seen nothing like that. She had to take a seat on the bed and just wipe sweat off her head. I ain't never seen nothing like this. And he said, I, I couldn't even tell you what just happened. I don't know if you would believe it if I told you. I don't know, I don't know if you'll believe it. And, um, you know, and he said he was sitting there in his room and he had the picture of Brother Brandon with the pillar of fire over his head. He had that, you know, sitting in his bedroom, at, at, in the hospital room. And he said all the nurses would come in just saying, I don't know what it is about this room, but it's so much peace in here. I don't even want to go to another room. I just want to work on you. It's so much peace in here. Testimony after testimony after testimony, I was here and I said, you know, if we get some of them saints to come over, some of them we might have to have testify. Uh, I mean, there was some, there were some powerful, powerful things that God has been doing. Amen. This last few years, God has been doing some things. So, uh, y'all just keep it in prayer. We, 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 I had a chance to talk a little bit with Brother Wesco yesterday and we're going to try to make something happen. Amen. We, we going to, we going to make it happen somehow some way amen praise the lord i ain't gonna take no more time i i'm i'm i'm, I'm wearing y'all out already uh i, I want to read a scripture amen i want to read a scripture um we um read from this a few weeks ago and i just want to pick up kind of where we left off uh matthew 
uh, 27, Matthew 27, and then I'll also go back to Deuteronomy 32. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Um, let me also say this. Um, when I was coming up as a young man and going to church, um, there were, as a young man going to church, you get your influence from other men in church. Um, you knew you'd see mom and the sisters and all of that. And at that time, my father was not a man that faithfully attended church. Uh, so we, we went to church, and, um, and, and when we got there, there were a few brothers in the church that uh, made lasting impressions, amen, on our minds as young men, me and my brother and my, uh, my cousin, amen, just a couple of us young men that were coming up. And uh, some of those brothers that made lasting impressions were Brother Capers, amen, uh, Brother Stanley, amen, Brother Coleman, and, uh, you know, we, we, we learned it was okay to praise God as men. Watching Brother Stanley and Brother Coleman. Up, 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 up. Man, they enjoyed Jesus. You get a, get a little African song, Sprung Up Diva. Boy, that was it. And, and, and they didn't mind coming to the middle of the flow. This is these the brothers that we following. So you know we we have we were we were impressed, amen, by that, and and it, and it, and, it, and it helped shape and mold us into the men uh, that we are today. So brother Stanley, we thank you, amen, for what you did and what you gave to us, amen. We thank you for that. Praise the Lord. He has been a mainstay. No matter what, you're gonna find Brother Stanley right where he need to be. Amen. And uh, just we just appreciate it. We appreciate seeing that. Amen. And um in him and as well as in Sister Stanley too. They were they were uh genuine. Yes. And I was thinking this morning when I first met um the Stanley family, uh we were worshiping in a school. Yeah. 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 That's right. yeah. Westwood. We were worshiping in the school, and God just got away of just, yeah, just bringing things. And, 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 so, and, and I appreciate anybody that's able to come and visit us while we're in this season. Because what we're in is temporary. Hey, everybody want to get on the wagon when it's coming down the hill, but nobody want to help you push it up. Thank God for people that will help you push it up. Come on, somebody. Hey, I got to leave it alone. <laughs> but I appreciate, I appreciate, amen, my precious brother Stanley. Amen. Here, uh, this in Matthew 20, uh, 27, verse 62 says, Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came uh, together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive after three days, I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away. Uh, and saying to the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Uh, Pilate said to them, ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have time to get into a little something that I had here, but that watch, Brother Branham said, it was 100 men. They were trying to make it as sure as they could. 100 men. But when God has established a promise, I don't care how many people standing against you. You can't stop God's word from being fulfilled. Amen. Great is he that's in us and he that's in the world. Glory to God. Let's turn over here to Deuteronomy 32 and 30. Um, I'll read this and I'll try to move on. Amen. 32 and 30. Um, it says this. How should one chase a thousand? And two put 10,000 to flight. 
except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, your precious word that has been read. And God, uh, we ask that you would just now anoint our minds to hear what the Holy Spirit would have us to hear, uh, even at this moment. Be magnified and glorified in this portion of the service. Um, God, if there's one that needs healing, bring healing. If there's one that needs deliverance, bring deliverance. If there's one that needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost, let them be filled. Even as the word of God is being spoken, people can be filled with the Holy Ghost. God, make the change in our, in our, in our, in our lives, God, today. We ask it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we want to just continue our journey on their rock is not like our rock. Amen. Part two, amen, of this sermon. Um, I was um, just wanting to make mention of something here. Uh, when, we, when we look at, you know, this word here in Scripture, their rock is not as our rock, even, as, even our enemies themselves being judges. Um, we, um, we find the reference to rock, amen, all throughout Scriptures. God being a rock. Amen. Uh, David makes that, 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 that reference in different places. He, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my God, you know, and my redeemer. Uh, David just kept going on and on and on talking about his God. And that's, I kind of feel like that today. I just want to keep going on and on and talking about this rock. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I, there's a, a, another songwriter gave a, a modern song that we sing. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's my wheel in the middle of a wheel. I know he'll never, never let me down. The, the other, he kept on going. So he just a jewel that I found. Then he just lost words there. All he could say is hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Good God. <laughs> and, 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 and this is what happens to you when you begin to realize what God is to you. Amen. You don't have enough words in your vocabulary to explain, amen, what he is to you. This is a real relationship. Amen. But, but I, I was just looking, amen, at a, at a number of scriptures here that refer to God being uh, our rock. Amen. And when we're, when we're talking about that, we're saying that he is, he, he, he's everything. He's our provider. He's our protector. He's our help. He's our, you know, way maker. He's our miracle worker. He's our healer. He's, I mean, whatever you need, that's what he is. Amen. When we say he's our rock. Man, this is something I can depend on, something I can stand on, I can stand with. I, I will never be made ashamed with this rock that I have. Amen. Glory to God. I, I thought about Isaiah 42 and 11. Amen. The Bible says this, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kadar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Amen. Hallelujah. If you, are, if you are abiding in the rock, come on somebody. Amen. You abide with the rock. Then it ought to give you a song in your heart. Amen. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Glory to God. I thought about 1 Samuel 2 and 2. Amen. It says this in scripture. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. Psalm 78 and 35. Amen. It says this. And they remembered, amen, that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer you got to find this reference to rock all over the scripture amen Daniel 2 and 45 
It says this, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter and the dream is certain and the interpreta interpretation thereof sure. When Daniel saw him, amen, in this particular uh, vision, this interpretation of a dream, uh, he saw Christ as a rock being cut cut out of the mountain and destroying every other kingdom that had been lifted up. I don't care how great the kingdom is, that kingdom will be destroyed because the rock, Christ Jesus, will destroy it. I want to read a little quote here, amen, from what is the Holy Ghost given for. Uh, the prophet makes a statement here referring to Daniel 2.45. He says, there is only one way to find it. There was a stone cut out of the mountain without hands that rolled into the world and smashed it out and become like wheat or chaff on the threshing floor. Let that stone, the Christ Jesus, the stumbling stone to the world, a stone of an offense, a laughing stone, a stumbling block to the church, eh, but a precious and load stone to the believer. Amen. He says, a stone of assurance. This is my rock. It's a rock of assurance. Amen. A stone of rest. Hey, when I'm inside the rock, I ain't got to worry about nothing. I can rest in there. Amen. Rest says, I know that I pass from death unto life. My soul is at rest. He says, oh, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest to your soul. A sign that's to be evil spoken of, said the prophet to Mary. It'll be a sign. Uh, it sure it will, but it will be an assurance. It'll be love. It'll be satisfaction. It'll be something that you know know you pass from death unto life this rock that Daniel saw is a rock of satisfaction amen this rock that Daniel saw is a rock of assurance amen it's a rock amen that we can rest in amen. blessed be the name of the Lord amen I'm, I'm stopping there but the other thing I thought here amen and, and while I, I was over there in, in uh, 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 London uh, after I preached the sermon their rock is not like our rock uh, I got a text from Brother Stephen uh, Funderburg, my, my nephew. Uh, he says, uh, Brother Jack, I had a revelation, amen, as you was preaching on, 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 on that. I said, okay. And he, uh, he, he says, I just got to start thinking about David and how, uh, how David picked up rocks. And he needed five rocks, amen, which represented F-A-I-T-H. And, amen. And, and also he needed grace, G-R-A-C-E. Hallelujah. In, in, in J-E-S-U-S. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, yes, sir. You done stepped into the second part of my sermon already. Amen. Because David had to pick up a rock. Come on, somebody. And this was not no ordinary rock that he used to slay Goliath. The reason we know it's not an ordinary rock is because the prophet told us that when David slung this rock toward Goliath, the rock moved at a thousand miles per hour. There is no man strong enough to throw a rock a thousand miles per hour. All I can tell you is that this rock was a predestinated rock. This rock was not like the rocks in Philistine. And then this rock was different from any other rock. And all David had to do was pick up the rock. Throw the rock in the sling and just, uh, uh, he could have just closed his eyes and let it go. But the rock was going to hit the target. And even this morning, if you sick this morning, God got a rock that will hit the target. If you discouraged this morning, I, God has a rock that will hit the target. Please, God, if you need a job, God's got a rock that'll hit the target. Whatever you need, God's got a rock. And their rock is not like our rock. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. David picked up that rock and took Goliath down. Amen, but we're going to need to understand now um, that we're going to go a little deeper, but that rock is not just a physical rock. That rock is a revelation. And if you could just pick up a rock, if you could just get a revelation, 
Sometimes when you're just reading your Bible, God will speak something to you right out of the Bible. If you're listening to a tape, God will say something through the prophet. When you come to church, God will speak through the pastor. And you begin to just get your script back full of rocks. Hey, hallelujah. Brother Diggs was sharing that testimony how he got sick. Amen. And, 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 and he's like, you know what? Uh, the whole church was all concerned. Like, this one's sick. That one's sick. And he's like, I ain't nothing going to happen to me. All of a sudden, the devil struck him. And there he is. He, he got sick late, late in the midnight hour. And he's like, ah. I can't take this. I got to preach. I can't, I can't accept what the devil giving me now. So he just began. He said he got up in the, in, the, in the midnight, just began to sing songs. And see that song, see, let the inhabitants of the rock sing. So he began to sing a song. Amen. And, and as he began to worship the Lord through song, he said he just start feeling that, 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 that sickness just lift. The next thing you know, that, that, that anointing took him into another song. And every song just kept, kept, kept him climbing higher and higher till he went to the atmosphere that he personally created. You got to learn how to create your personal atmosphere. Glory to God. He, uh, he, the inhabitant of the rock began to sing. And as he began to sing, he said, all of a sudden that sickness just went away. And uh, he said God had to allow him to be touched by the sickness so he could go and share a personal testimony with the people that all you got to do is begin to worship the Lord. In the midst of whatever you're going through, you'll see that thing break. God has to give you a revelation in the midst of everything you're going through. That revelation is your rock. Psalm 62, let's read this. Amen. Psalms 62. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Here uh, we're going to find, amen, this reference to rock. It's all over the scripture. <laughs> all over the scripture. Here, and uh, Brother Branham, he used this particular um, text when he preached the message, Shalom. Shalom means God's peace. Amen. And remember, uh, when you are in the rock, you can have peace. Amen. But you got to be in the rock. Oh, yes. Amen. Here, uh, Psalm 62 says, truly, my soul waiteth uh, upon God. From him cometh my salvation. Uh, he only is my rock. Amen. Glory to God. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. He long, how long will you imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a, a, a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. My God, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Salah. My, amen, my soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him, is from him, he only. I, I told you when David writes things like this, remember how he was hiding in the cave? Amen, he thought that was his protection, but in the very cave that he was hiding in, God brought his enemy right into the same cave, right? Amen, so David had to realize the cave is not my protection. How many of y'all are trying something natural? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Some, some, I mean, some, some, you know, maybe some natural way to get your, your, get your needs met. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your job only is not your, 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 your final solution. Mm -hmm. Amen. It, it is not your source. It's a resource, mm -hmm. but it's not your source. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. But, but we got to understand God alone, God only is my rock. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Glory, I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Salah. Now, when Brother Brandon preached the message, Shalom, he stopped there. But I want to keep going in this. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. 
to be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Come on, somebody. Amen. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Amen. And I believe riches will increase. Glory to God. It says this, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power, glory to God, power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belong, belongeth mercy, for thou, thou renderest to every man according to his work. Amen. Amen. God is my rock. Amen, 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 amen. Here in the message alone, just a quick amen uh, quote here. It says, um, now you, if you notice in the scripture reading, he's talking about Psalm 62. It says, if you notice in the scripture reading, amen, there in Psalms, it kept saying, God is my rock. He says, do you know what a rock represents in the Bible? A rock in the Bible here represents the revelation of God. So when you say God is my rock, he's my revelation. And I'm going to tell you, when you have a revelation of God, you can, you can be at peace. Yeah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, church. You can really be at peace when you have a revelation. Amen. He, say, he says, uh, God is my, see, God is my revelation. He is, see, the revelation of the word is the rock. Oh, my. The revelation of the word is the rock. Amen. So many people that we can go back at and look in scripture, they held, they held on to one revelation, and that was their rock. Look, it says, because Peter one day, Jesus had asked the question, who does men say that I, the son of man, am? And one of them said, some of them said, you are Moses or Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But that wasn't the question. Who do you say I am? He, Peter, spoke up. These famous words said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He says, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonas, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to thee, but my Father which is in heaven, and upon this rock. See? Amen. And David speaking here, God is our rock. God is our rock. When God has been revealed to us, that becomes a rock. See, God is our rock. So when the revelation is made known to you, that revelation itself becomes your rock. The rock that you can hide in. The rock that you can stand on. Glory, the, the rock that you can have assurance in. The rock that you can rest on. Once God reveals something to you, stand on the rock. Hey, I'm standing on the rock this morning. Amen. For, for, for you parents with wayward children, stand on the rock. Find yourself a scripture and just stand on the rock. No matter what you see, no matter what you hear, glory to God. If it don't speak according to the rock, call it a line of vanity. Amen. I don't care what your trouble is. Stand on the rock, the rock of revelation. That's how God builds his churches upon the rock of revelation. Oh, my, my, my. Thank God for this. Amen. Here we picked up in, in Deuteronomy uh, 32. I want to just kind of go back and catch a couple more things. Amen. Out of this. Uh, glory. Hallelujah. There was something there. Uh, 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 let's catch verse, uh, verse 1 through 4 again. Deuteronomy 32. It says, Give ear, o, o ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. It says, My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as, and as the showers upon the grass. Moses says, Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe you greatness unto our God. I'm looking for things to give God praise for and to let everybody else know what he's done for me. He says this, Moses says, he is the rock. Amen. His work is perfect. For all his ways of judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. I'm skipping down to verse 12, amen, in the same chapter. 
Moses continues to write about him, says, So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Talk about how God brought Israel out. Amen. The same God that brought Israel out is the same God that brought us out. Amen. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. And I love that. You know, he made him to suck honey out of the rock. Well, why would honey be in the rock? Oh, why would honey be on the rock? Yay, yeah, somebody. Do you know we are the sheep of his pasture? Amen. Let me just read the quote to you. I, 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 maybe I, door and door, I'm, I'm going to get that set up. But let me, I, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about it before I read it. But we are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. And sheep, amen, sometimes get sick. And a shepherd realizes there's a trick for uh, to in order to get this, in order to get the the, 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 the sheep well. Amen. He has to when that sheep gets sick. In order to get them well, what he has to do is give them some limestone. Right, right. Glory to God. Now a sheep, Amen. In its in its nature, will not go to that limestone and, and begin to lick. Right. The limestone tastes too bad. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. They, they're not going to go by themselves and go get no limestone and, and try to get well. They're going to run from the limestone. But what the shepherd has to do is take the limestone and put a little honey on top of the limestone. Amen. He glazes the stone with honey. And the sheep don't realize every time they lick the honey, they are licking the rock. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Your healing is in the rock. Your deliverance is in the rock. Sometimes we have to dress the rock up a little bit. We got to make it taste a little bit, a little different for you. But you still getting the same rock. Hey, you still going to get the same message of the hour. We might have to dress it up sometimes, but it's the same rock. And it will bring healing. There's healing bomb in the rock. Salvation is in the rock. Glory to God. Everything you need is inside the rock. Woo, glory to God. Amen. We're going to dress up this quote. We're going to dress up this scripture. But we want to give it to the sheep so they can lick and get their strength. Oh, my, my, my. He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields. Deuteronomy 32 and 13. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. I'm going to keep moving on. Amen, 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 amen. All right, now... Um, I wanted to, you know, just kind of go back. Let's, let's keep going in verse um, 17 and 18 here in Deuteronomy. It says this, they sacrifice unto devils, uh, not to God, to gods whom they knew not. So this is what happened to Israel. They were, they were first under the rock and somehow they backslid. Somehow they backslid. And, um, you know, and, and, and here they, they get to rather than worshiping God, they're worshiping devils. A sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. They got, got to worship in a golden calf. Yeah. Right? Or what happened here? After all these supernatural vindications of God bringing them out of Egypt, opening up the Red Sea, then they still get to a point where they build a new God. And they tell, they tell, they tell him, uh, Moses is lost up there. We don't know what happened to him. Make us a new God, Aaron. And, make, and he formed and shaped the God out of, out of uh, uh, all the gold that they had. And he said, he said, make us a God. And here he said, now y'all going to worship something that y'all had to create? <laughs> what, 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 what's the matter with y'all? Right? He said, they sacrifice unto devils, not to God. And I want to tell you something this morning. There are people going to church. Come on. Yeah. 
right now yes. and don't realize they step into the church and they're sacrificing to devils yes. and don't even realize God ain't got nothing to do with it. Yes. God ain't got nothing to do with that church. They, they have, the Bible actually speaks of people having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Amen. Glory to God. We, we got to know what we involved in. Hey, I ain't going to church just to be identified with some group. I, I, need, I, need, I need to get close to the rock. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Verse 18, of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful. The, the rock that, that begot you, you're unmindful. We forget where God brought us from. Yes. Amen. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. But I love this book. I'm going down to verse 30. This is why, you know, Moses keeps writing about this rock. He says, how should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? Except the rock had sold them, and, and the Lord had shut them up. Now, when we're talking about this rock and God being a rock, we, we're actually saying the rock is Christ. The rock is Christ. Amen. This is, this is a spiritual term that we're using. Uh, but when we say that he's our rock, we're saying he's our everything. He's my comforter. He's my keeper. He's my deliverer. Hey, he's my shield. He's my provider. He's my protector. Some of us don't even deserve the protection that we get. Some of us don't deserve the blessings that we get. But yeah, he still blesses us anyway. Amen. I, I mean, now he done gave us his all. When we gonna give him our all? Every day he's giving you his all. Amen, amen. When, when, when they told you that you couldn't get that job, you weren't qualified, and somehow you end up on the job, who you think opened the door? The rock did that. Amen, you were sick. The doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. God raised you up. It was the rock that did that. This is why, this is why uh, Moses writes his word. Says, he says, how should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Wow. I love this. I, I love this. I want to want to just camp out just a little bit more right in here. When, when we read there in verse 30 where it says their rock had sold them. Oh, the language is so uh, challenging. But when I looked at it in, in the uh, Hebrew lexicon, it said to sell oneself or to give over to death. So in order, and, and when it said their rock had sold them, it meant we needed a rock that would give its life for us. And we got a rock that not only gave its life for us, but a, a rock that rose on the third day. And this is why I say even inside the tomb, our rock was laying beneath a rock. Our rock was laying behind a rock. And they were trying to make their rock as sure as they could. The prophet said 100 men were guarding the rock. But brother, when God sent a supernatural earthquake, not even 100 men could guard the rock. The Bible said they all fell as if they were dead. And the angels sat on top of the rock. I love this because when, 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 when the angels sat on top of the rock, there were two rocks that moved. the natural rock move but the spiritual rock that was laying behind the rock also moved hey, and I'm here to tell you their rock is not like our rock if he moved on resurrection Sunday then he is still moving today hey hallelujah you know even you know the reason why we Christians go to church on Sunday? Mm -hmm. So, you, you, you know, when you run into people that talk about, you know, you're going to church on the wrong day. Yeah. You should be going on Saturday because Saturday is the Sabbath. And, you know, you know we, we get all of that. 
The reason we go to church on Sunday is because we're honoring the resurrection. According to the scripture, Jesus rose on the day after the Sabbath. Now here's the other thing I want to tell you is that I'm not limited to just going to church on Sunday. Hey, I can praise him seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So I praise him on Saturday. I praise him on Sunday. I praise him on Monday. I, 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 hey, I will praise him. Glory to God. So don't get caught up in conversations like that. What day we going to? Actually, the day is it's, it's, actually, it's not even a day anymore. It's a person. The Sabbath is a person. And unless you have this rock, you can't even have a Sabbath. You can't have rest until you have the rock. Hey, glory to God. All right, let's pick up Exodus 17 again, and let me just move on uh, in here. Exodus 17, verse 3 through 7. Um, here we find this rock uh, in um, Moses and the children of Israel. They said, the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and the rock wherewith thou smotest the river, take, take in thine hand, and go. And look at this. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock, and Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock. Amen. And there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the children of uh, the chiding of the children of Israel. And because they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Here they got this question because they got a little thirsty. But the way God desired, the, the, uh, 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 um, the way God had in His mind to to, to fulfill their, their 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 thirst is to have Moses strike a rock. Now, how many of y'all ever went to a rock and got water? But this is the way God does things. He does does things that blows your mind. Moses, I'm gonna be standing on the rock, and I want you to take your rod and strike the rock and watch what happened to the rock. Now I need you to, I wanna, I wanna just kinda bring something in here for you if I can. Uh, let me see here. Yes. Go to Corinthians Book of Correction. This is a, 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 a quote, Corinthians Book of Correction. When I preached this last week, man, the brothers were just rejoicing and, and just, just, just coming and giving me all kinda quotes after this. I said, okay, that'll be part two then. So I figured I would bring it to you. I want you to get in your mind what kind of rock, what kind of rock could uh, Moses just walk up to and hit with a rod and water come out? Water come out and not only, amen, uh, satisfy the people, but all the animals. How big is this rock? How great is this rock? Well, I'm going to already let you know. I'm going to already let you know. When you're talking about God, little is much. Little is much when God is in it. Two million people drink from a rock. Now look at this, the, the, the good thing about this is that we don't have to let our imagination wander. We got a prophet we can go back to that can tell us what it was. Amen. Do you realize in order for you to believe Genesis, you got to believe a prophet. What, what prophet are you believing? The prophet Moses. And Moses was not in the garden. Moses came years later. Moses was not there with Abraham. How could he tell us what happened on Mount Moriah? 
In order for you to believe the Bible, you got to believe in a prophet. Yes, Amen. Amen. My God. I mean, how do we know what happened in the Garden of Eden through Moses? What, he wasn't there. How do he know what the serpent said? Praise the Lord. I mean, think about it. We, we just pick it up and read it now, but it, it takes belief in a prophet. Yes, Amen. That's the importance of having a prophet. Because a prophet actually goes into the mind of God by vision. And he sees things and he's able to give it out to you. If you didn't have that, you wouldn't understand the scripture. Amen. That, that's why we stand on this rock of revelation. This is why we stand here. Glory to God. Without a prophet, I wouldn't even be able to preach what I'm preaching right now. Not with the revelation that I have. You know, the, the, the thing that, that, that I forgot to tell you about this rock, that rock, when we read it there in, um, in, uh, in, in, in Exodus, it wasn't a one-time occasion. They didn't just get rock after one complaint. God actually allowed the rock to follow them. Hey, the Bible actually said it. Paul picked it up and said it. Where did Paul get that from? Paul said the rock was Christ and the rock followed them. So every time they got thirsty, hey, praise God, they didn't have to run to the rock. The rock was already there. Oh, my. Whatever you need, turn to the rock. Whatever you need, speak to the rock. to understand what is amen the rock is always with you he promised never to leave you nor forsake you this is not a one time thing this is every day when we need we have your, 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 your camel thirsty anything you need it the horse thirsty go right there your child thirst right here. And they're not going back to Meribah. Oh, the rock followed them. But what kind of rock is this? And thank God for a prophet that, that tells us that. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. Just pull that up real quick before I go to the scripture. I'm just telling you what the Bible say. 1 Corinthians 10, 4. And a prophet brought these two thoughts together. How many times I done read 1 Corinthians 10? I've been reading my Bible, uh, these one-year Bible reading plans for over 20 years. And never caught this. And, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. They drank from that spiritual rock that followed them. Do you realize even when you get into a little jam, maybe a court situation, you trying to figure out how to work through this and work through that and what I'm going to do here and what I'm going to say here. Nah, I turn. In court, he's a rock. In jail, he's a rock. You can ask Paul and Silas because the rock was with them in jail. And the rock will loose the bonds. Praise God, the rock will open up sails. The rock will set you free. Wherever you go, there is a rock. his holy name when I was just just this brother teach you know um, he's the brother that actually did the he was the fourth brother to go up on that service uh, when they did the the brothers the, like the tag team I forget what they call it the relay, the relay. Yeah. yeah I said man that's all right just don't even read no scripture start preaching yeah. it was good it was real good 
uh, but uh, but here, you know, brother brother Teach got up there, and, and after I shared the sermon on last week, he said, brother Jack, I would just want to share this quote with you, and uh, we need to think in our mind, how big was this rock? A prophet is going to give us a description, and all we got to do is follow this. Now look at this in Corinthians book of correction it says, how this rock laying there, God had a rock that had a stored full of water, just a little rock, perhaps not no bigger than that desk. I started looking for a desk. I mean, Sister Cerise is back there behind a desk. The brothers are back there behind a desk. Two million people and their animals are fed from a rock that's no bigger than a desk. It don't take God a lot. Just the little rocks, perhaps no bigger than that desk. But when Moses smote this rock, there was enough water came from it to water two million people. And not only that, but as many cattle and sheep and things as they had with them. Oh, when I see some of these artists who paint pictures of a little drop falling out of a rock and a kid standing there with a little bucket in his hand. Oh, it never come like that. When you go to this rock, it ain't coming out little itty bitty blessings. Hey, look at what happens when you go to this rock. Hey, it never come like that. It come by bountiful gushers. Brother, it come in a way where you can't handle it. The exceeding, the abundant, above all you can ask or think. That's what comes from the rock. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready to give me a blessing from the rock. Blessings that I can't contain. Hey, hallelujah. I'm turning to the rock. I'm tired of living beneath my privileges. Brother, I'm going to the rock. Praise God. What a rock. Hey. It never come like that. It come by bountiful gushers. A rock as big as a desk. Bountiful gushers. What source is this? It watered over two million people besides their camels and all their animals. The rock, that rock was Christ Jesus. A beautiful parallel of John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. He says, and notice what happened. The only way that they could get that water out of the rock, the judgment rod had to strike the rock. And Moses smote the rock and God's judgment struck upon the rock. And when it did, it gave forth its waters. Wow. See, your rock had to be sold. It had to be willing to die for you. Yeah. Amen. It gave forth its waters. The people were absolutely, God was just, just in letting, God was just in letting them die because they had disbelieved him. They had dishonorable, they were reprobates. I told you, some of us don't, 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 don't deserve the blessings that we do receive. If God did not bless you, he's just in doing it. He's just. Amen. He, he says um, they, they had been dishonorable, they were reprobates, they did not deserve to live. Moses called them rebels, rebellious against God, and they deserve to die. 
And all of us deserve death because we're rebellion against God, correct? We all deserving, deserve dying, but God is so merciful. Yes. He should not never thought of us, but he's so merciful till he took the sins of every one of us and struck upon his own beloved son. Wow. Christ, that we might not perish, but, but would have eternal life. Yes. Oh, how I thank God for that. Yes. Now, let me just slip over to a little something here because the rock, the rock moves. The rock, a man, followed them in the wilderness. Uh, the rock was found in a tomb, and it moved out of the tomb. Uh, uh, Brother Solomon mentioned, and, and I, uh, I, I'll show you all the picture. Did we, did we get the picture? Okay, let's just show the picture. Brother Solomon mentioned this, and I'll show this to you. A man, and uh, he, when I preached this a couple weeks ago, he, he, he came and gave a, a story. And it says, uh, when um, Brother Branham was out here, I believe this is Sunset Mountain, I believe. And he's out there, and his son, Joseph, is on this rock in Sunset Mountain, which is out in Tucson. I mean, out near Tucson. And they're standing there on this picture. And, um, and Brother Branham makes a statement about this picture. A prophet can only say things like this. He said this in the message, the unveiling of God. Oh, think about the title, yeah. the unveiling of God. Yeah. And it says this, Moses one time desired to see God. And God had told him to stand on the rock. He says, and on the rock, Moses stood and he seen God pass by. And his back looked like the back of a man. God was in a whirlwind. Uh, and, and Moses standing on the rock, look at this. He says, I guess you all seen the picture out there the other day. What picture? This picture. He says, I guess you all seen the picture out there the other day. We stood by that same rock. And here is that light, the angel of the Lord, right there where it clapped. Standing is right on the bulletin board there now again. Brother Branham said him and his son stood on the same rock. The same rock that watered the children of Israel. The same rock that Moses struck. You got to understand, the rock moves. is a supernatural rock and if the prophet and his son was standing on the rock guess where we're standing today we are standing on the same rock what rock is that the rock of revelation I'll give you another it moved again I'll tell you another one let's go to second Kings chapter 3 and I'm going to try to wind up right here I'm going to try to wind up right here. Hey, I thank God for this. After I read 2 Kings 3, my, uh, um, I'm, the next quote going to be making a valley full of ditches. But 2 Kings chapter 3, let's look at, let's look at this. Amen. Starting at verse 1. Mm, mm, mm. This is a supernatural rock. Their rock is not like our rock. Amen. Uh, okay. Praise the Lord. Second Kings chapter three, verse one. It says this. It says, now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned 12 years. So now let's, let's get these characters in our mind as we're going through this. Jehoram is the son of Ahab, who was the most wicked king that Israel ever had. Uh, and he's the son being raised up in a household like that. It affected him, right? And uh, so here, Jehoram, uh, his mother, uh, uh, well, it doesn't necessarily, but we know his father's Ahab. Uh, Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria, the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. So uh, at this time, the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah, they're divided. Now, they're the same people, but they're divided. Amen. Um, so here, here, here we, we see king of, the king of Judah, which is Jehoshaphat, king of Israel, going to be Jehoram. Okay? Uh, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned 12 years, and he wrought evil 
in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and like his mother, for he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. <laughs> Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin and depart, and he departed not therefrom. And Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep master, and rendered unto the king of Israel an hundred thousand lambs and a hundred thousand rams with the wool. And it came to pass when Ahab was dead that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. Say, I'm, I'm not giving you no more. Uh, I, I'm stopping right here, you know. So uh, the, the, here the scripture says, And King Jehoram went out of Samaria the same time and numbered all Israel. So he's getting ready to get his army established. Uh, he's, he, this guy has rebelled against him. He's not paying uh, what he used to pay to his father. And he's like, look, I'm going to get what belonged to me, right? This is what Jehoram is going to do. Uh, so um, uh, verse 7 says, and he went and sent to Jehoshaphat. Now, he didn't want to go by himself, so he's going to the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat. He needs some help in the battle, right? He says, he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, the king of Moab hath rebelled against me. Wilt thou go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and my horses as thy horses. And he said, which way shall we go up? And he answered, the way through the wilderness of Edom. And he's just happy to have Jehoshaphat going with him. Amen. And he says, we're going to go through the way, the wilderness of Edom. Now, I'm, I'm, before I, I get there, I just want to let you know, as they're going the way through the wilderness of Edom, this was really not a good route to go. This was a route that would actually bring death to them. Hey, you got to know where you're going. This was a route that was actually going to bring death to, to the men. Right? Amen. But he's just so happy that we got them going. So, so, so here he says, uh, uh, um, uh, verse 9 says, So the king of Israel went and, and the king of Judah. So Jehoram and Jehoshaphat. And the king of Judah. And the king of Edom. They got a third king to go with them. And they fetched a compass of seven days journey. And there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. Imagine going without water for seven days. This was a death trap. Look at this. So, and the king of Israel said, alas that the Lord have called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But, but Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet? I love the way this man thinks. And Jehoshaphat, even now he's on a seven day journey with this king, amen, and he got no water for him, no servants, and you know, and so, so finally remembers, he thinks about something. He, he had to go back and say, is there not here a prophet. Look, we don't need to try to lead ourselves. And we don't have to lead ourselves if we would subject ourselves to a prophet. Look at this. Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the kings of Israel's servants answered and said, here is Elisha. And Elisha represent the bride. Here's Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. Yes, Amen. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Now Jehoshaphat is the one looking for him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, uh, and Elisha said unto the king of Israel, now he's talking to Jehoshaphat, I mean uh, Jehoram, what have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father. Because his daddy was worshiping Baal. Amen. Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said to him, Nay, for the Lord have called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. 
I had to stop there and just pause just for a second. Some people are blessed because you were there. Your job is blessed because they have employed you. Praise the Lord. Amen. If it had not been the presence of Jehoshaphat, Jerem would have never even got a word from the prophet. Oh, look at this now. Hey, I feel Jesus in the place. Elisha, verse 14, Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. But now bring me a minstrel. Give me an anointed musician with a good attitude. Bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Hey, now Elisha could, could get into the spirit and begin to prophesy. And it said, thus, said, thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Now they have not drank water in seven days. And now he's telling them to start working. Dig ditches. Now I need you to understand, the digger, I mean the deeper you dig, the greater your blessing. The deeper of the ditch, the greater your blessing. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He says, he says, uh, and he said, thus said the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind. Neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water. Glory, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And ye, uh, and ye shall smite every fenced city and every choice city and shall feel, uh, uh, fail every good tree and stop our wells of water and, and, and mar every good piece of land with stones. Now, I'm going to just stop right there. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed one verse. Verse 18. Amen. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. So God was going to do two things. I'm going to fill the valley full of water. If you just make some ditches in the valley here, I'm going to put water so all y'all can drink. And then I'm also going to deliver the Moabites into your hand. Gushers of blessings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. If I could just put it this way. I know you got something you believe in God for. But why don't you give God an and? Because he don't want to just stop at one blessing. And, and, and. Make the valley full of ditches. Let me read, read this quote. I had to read the script and then set you up for the quote. Now watch this. They're going to get... Water, no rain, uh -huh. no wind, uh, yeah. but water. Yeah. How's that supposed to happen? <laughs> A prophet mm. tells us mm. what happens. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. you know, someone told me not long ago, said, Brother Branham, music in the church is wrong. <laughs> I said, it is? Do you think God changes in nature? No. I said, then when the prophet got all stewed up, Elisha was upset. When Jehoram, I ain't got no respect for you, your daddy, your mama, I ain't got no respect for none of y'all. And if you were standing here by yourself, I wouldn't even say nothing to you. You better be glad that Jehoshaphat is here. You better be glad Jehoshaphat's suffering. Because if Jehoshaphat was suffering, you'd be in trouble. Stewed up. Woo. Watch it now. Watch it. Watch it. Then when the prophet got all stood up and said, bring a minstrel. And when the minstrel began to play, the hand of the Lord came upon the prophet. If music brought the power of God, then 
What y'all think Sister Nelly was feeling earlier? It was the music. It was the atmosphere. If it brought the power of God then, it's still bringing it today. When you go to, well, I mean, don't just get to church when the preaching start. Get there during the song service. You don't know what God will do for you. He's trying to put you in an atmosphere so you can receive something from God. The hand of the Lord came upon the prophet and music brought the power of God. Then it will bring the power of God now. That's just, that's just exactly God. Still the same God. See, in the prophet, now you might not be a prophet. Uh, but you could be the minstrel yes. Yes. or you can be part of it anyhow right. to bring the power of God yes. Yes. it says they started to pray yes. and Elisha got in the spirit and he saw a vision now he said when he saw a vision he said go out yonder in the desert right where you're at and go to digging ditches amen and dig them out for thus saith the Lord, you'll not hear any wind, any rain, but there'll be water that'll come from the way of the wilderness. Why? Where'd that water come from? Where'd that water come from? Didn't come from rain. Didn't come from wind. Where'd that water come from? From that rock. Brother, the rock moved again. When they made the valley full of ditches, Amen. The water came from the rock. The rock is even with you in your desert place. When you feel like nothing's happening, the rock is still there. When it don't feel like he's working, he's working. When it don't seem like he's working, he's working. He never stops. He never stops. He never stops working. Where'd that water come from? From that rock. That smitten rock that was in the wilderness. Amen. That's right. It was back there somewhere. It might have been covered up. But there was a smitten rock in there that Moses smoked coming through the wilderness. Can you imagine that? And that smitten rock still lays yonder too to be touched tonight. The waters of life. Can you imagine that? A man that the prophet don't even want to have anything to do with. He's a, he's a, he's a, a king that the prophet don't even want to say two words to. But because he's in the company of another man that, that had the, had the uh, 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 just had in his heart and in his mind, he said, look, we've been going through for seven days. I, I asked you which way we was going. You told us which way we was going. And we got out here, and you, man, ain't no water out here. Seven days. And that means if we go seven days back, we still won't find water. That'll be 14 days of no water. We can't live like that. Man, you got me out here in the jam. And he's starting to, now he want, he want to blame God. God going to lead us out here and now we're going to all die. This ain't God's fault. Some of the things you in ain't God's fault. You put yourself in that situation. Amen. But here's, here's the good part about it. That when, when Jehoshaphat had enough in him to say, is it a prophet around me? I don't want to hear nobody else. Just tell me what the prophet said. Is there a prophet around here? They say Elisha who used to serve under Elijah. Okay, go get him. The word of the Lord is with him. And when he come out there and got the music to playing, my the anointing struck and a vision struck the prophet. I believe that the prophet saw it was not just the water. He knew where the source of water was coming from. That's why he could tell them, say, look, it ain't going to be no rain. It ain't going to be no wind. But if you would just get your ditches dug. You're going to find water in the ditch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the prophet knew that the rock was sitting right there. Yeah. It might have been covered up, but that rock was not only sitting there, it was still working. Yes, 
I'm here to tell you something about the rock. The Bible says the rock is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Because the rock is Christ. Glory to God. <laughs> Whatever we need, just go to the rock. Turn to the rock. And when you get to the rock, don't just ask for water. Because the rock want to take your enemies out. Brother, in this scripture, even the enemies could testify that the rock was with them. Even Moab could testify that the rock was with them. Your doctor going to testify that the rock is with you. Your lawyer going to testify that the rock is with you. The judge is going to testify that the rock is with you. Praise God. When that devil think he got you pinned in, got you pinned down, all of a sudden a rock shows up out of nowhere. Maybe it was just covered over, but it was always there. Just be obedient. Be obedient to what the prophet is telling you to do. You'll get your, 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 your substance, your sustenance. You'll get everything you need from the rock. Their rock is not like our rock. God richly bless you, church. can come and just give me just one minute. I got enough time to just read this little last quote here for you now. I'll uh, turn it back over to Brother Solomon. Amen. This is a message why. Amen. Going back to the scripture when they were trying to make it as sure as they could. But they couldn't. And I tell you what, the devil been trying to make it as sure as he could for some of y'all. But he can't. He can't. I, I ain't trusted in nothing but my rock. Yeah, I ain't trusted in nothing but my rock. I ain't trusted in my job. <laughs> I ain't trusted in my doctor. <laughs> I ain't trusted in my lawyer. I'm trusting in my rock. He only is my rock. Hey, hallelujah. Uh, the message why yes. the uh, prophet makes the statement here when God got ready to try out his toxin did you notice he never put it in a guinea pig he put it in himself your rock got to be willing to die for you uh, any good doctor tries out his own medicine on himself first now, God took it upon himself when God was made flesh and dwelt among us in the life of Christ Jesus being his son. And God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He took the toxin upon himself. When he was baptized by John on the river of Jordan, John bare record seeing, seeing the spirit of God like a dove coming from heaven, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It went into him. The disciples and all watched him to see what he would do. They watched his life to see how he would act, to see what would take place. We find him like there when he was under temptation, the toxin hell. When he was uh, in the garden of Gethsemane, the toxin hell. When he was spit on in his face, the toxin hell. When they nailed him to the cross, the toxin hell. 
it was good. They found out it was good. They sent, they seen it would keep him. When he died at the cross and they buried him in the ground on the third morning, now what's going to take place? There he is, he's dead. He's buried, hid beneath the big rock where a century of men rolled, it, rolled, it, uh, rolled the stone over to hold him down. Now what's going to happen? A guard stood at the door, a hundred men watching him. What's going to take place? What's going to take place? He prophesied through the word of God and said that on the third day, he'd rise up again. They made the guard sure. Now what about the toxin? That Easter morning about daybreak, there come an angel down from heaven, rolled away the stone, and the toxin held in the time of death. The toxin held because it was God's word. And I'm gonna tell you, if you stand on the promise, the toxin's gonna hold again today. God's promise that it was the toxin that he gave the bomb in Gilead, sure. Now we find out when he rose up on Easter morning, he appeared to many of them, began to show that after the resurrection, the toxin was still the same. It did the same works it did before he died, it still held. There become 120 people interested in getting inoculated. I wish all uh, the world would become interested tonight in becoming inoculated because they see it held in the time of temptation. It kept him from sinning. It held him in temptation. When he was riled upon, he riled not back. It held him in death. And when he died and went in the grave, it held in the resurrection and come forth again. I like that toxin, don't you? I think that's a good cure. They did everything they could to make it as sure as they could. But I thank God that our rock was not like their rock. Our rock got up out of a grave and that rock is still alive today. Whatever you need, go to the rock. God richly bless you, church. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we come before your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the revelation of the word of God that comes to us in this hour. We have something that we're standing on. No matter what is coming against us, we have a rock, an assurance, a peace, a love. God, we have everything we need. And we pray, oh God, that you would just help us to realize you're never, never far away. You're right there. All we got to do is talk to you. Speak to you. You'll, 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 you'll work it out. God, I, I have needs. I have needs in, in, in my business. I need the rock to work it out. Oh, we have needs in the church. We need the rock to work it out. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, we have people that need homes. We need the rock to work it out. People that need jobs, we need the rock to work it out. People that are dealing with sickness in their body, we need the rock to work it out. We turn to the rock. Somebody needs peace in their mind, a decision that has to be made. Lord, we turn to the rock. We look, we look to you, God, not to our lawyer, not to our judge, not to our doctor, not to our boss. We look to you, for you alone are our rock. Lord, I pray that you would just minister to every heart, to every need. And may it not just be a sermon, oh God, that we get excited about. But Lord, may it become a revelation on the inside. Broken homes need to be restored. We turn to the rock. Father, we ask your blessings, Lord, upon your word and upon your people that have heard the word today, God. Make a difference in all of our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Stand to your feet and let's worship together. Amen. As I give this service back to Brother Solomon.
worship you. I worship you. And you Say it again. And you are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. And you are here, working in this place. I worship you.
his keeper light in the darkness my God say way maker oh, oh. light in the darkness my God that is who you are oh. oh praise the Lord praise the Lord he's still moving that rock still moving up this morning that rock still moving whatever you have me oh. even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop
sisters, our guests that came in our midst, Lord. Be with them as well, Lord, and bless them, Lord. May they share forth the light of the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere they go. Father, we love you. Commit the service and commit these people into your hands. In Jesus Christ, precious and holy name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints. 